Hi everyone, it's Dr. A, and in this video, we're going to take a few moments to discuss the process known as excitation contraction coupling. And it's this process that you'll see momentarily, which describes the interaction between the nervous system and the plasma membrane of the skeletal muscle fiber. So before we dig into this process, let's get an understanding of what we're going to be reviewing based solely on terminology. So again, this process is referred to as excitation contraction coupling. So in this sense, excitation refers to the stimulation and or activation of a nerve, specifically a motor neuron. And the term contraction represents the shortening of the actin and myosin filaments of the sarcomere. And coupling here simply refers to the fact that these factors coupled together lead to muscle action. Now, at the beginning of this process, the sarcomere and or muscle fiber is in a resting position, much like what you see here, where there is minimal overlap of the actin and myosin filaments. And the events that we'll uncover momentarily depict the steps that take place in order for muscle contraction to occur. And just in case you haven't, feel free to review the video regarding the components of a sarcomere prior to continuing with this video. So because communication is needed between the nervous and muscular systems in order for a contraction to occur, it makes sense that there is a meeting place for these two systems to actually communicate. And this meeting place can be referred to as the neuromuscular junction. As shown on your screen, that is exactly what we're reviewing. So let's label some of the components that you see here. First, we have the motor neuron, which is the nerve that connects to and powers the muscle fiber. Next, we have the synaptic terminal, which represents the end component of the motor neuron. Next is what we refer to as the motor end plate, and this is the area that represents the part of the muscle fiber in which the motor neuron sits. Now, the space between the synaptic terminal and the motor end plate is referred to as the synaptic cleft. And just below this, we'll notice the sarcomere. And to both sides of it, we have the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Now, going back up for just a moment, in our synaptic terminal, we'll see structures referred to as synaptic vesicles. Now, the key to keep in mind is that neurons control skeletal muscle fibers, and they do so through the production of an action potential. So, this process begins by an action potential traveling down the length of the axon, and it arrives at the synaptic terminal. The second step to make note of here is that the synaptic vesicles release a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. And after their release, acetylcholine is now within the synaptic cleft. Next, the acetylcholine binds to the end of the motor end plate, specifically to its receptors, which are referred to as nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Now that acetylcholine has attached to its receptors, we're going to have some ion movement. Now, keep in mind that ions are simply charged particles, and for our purposes, we're specifically looking at two, which are sodium and potassium. And we can refer to these briefly as activation of the sodium-potassium pump, where sodium begins to enter the muscle fiber, and potassium leaves the muscle fiber. And it does this in such a way where more sodium is entering the muscle fiber then there is potassium leaving, and this generally occurs in a ratio of 3 to 2. Now, in the interim, the acetylcholine that we have in the synaptic cleft is degraded, and this is completed by an enzyme called acetylcholine esterase. And this happens so that acetylcholine cannot rebind to a receptor. So in effect, without acetylcholine esterase, it would be possible to have an unwanted extended contraction of a given muscle. So now we're at a point where the action potential is going to travel 
along the length of what we refer to as the transverse tubule, or you can call it the T-tubule for short. And so what this initiates is the release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum into the sarcoplasm. And it's the release of calcium which then allows for the initiation of a muscle contraction. Well, thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful. And if you indeed loved this video, you'll most certainly love the next one.